Now let's learn how to do inheritance mapping. Suppose I have a class called project and then I have another class called module which extends project and then I have a class called task which extends module. Now let us put some data into these classes and see how to create tables out of these classes. First for the project, I would like to have some ID and project name. So this class project has a project ID and project name and let us have the getters and setters for these two private data. So we have the getters and setters for this project ID and project name. Now same thing, let us do something for the module. Now in the module class which extends project, let us have like a data called module name and then let us have the getters and setters of that module. So here I have a module name and then the getter and setter of the module name. And in the task class, I'm going to have some getters and setters and some private data. So in task, which extends the module, I have the task name and the getters and setters of the task name. So we now have three classes, project with the ID and project name, module which extends project, which has its own module name and task which extends module. So multiple level inheritance. Now let us learn how to create tables out of these three classes. Now with whatever we know, let us annotate these classes. So I know like if I want to save a particular class as a table, I'll have to put it as entity. So let me annotate it with entity. I also know that for primary key, I need to have the ID annotation. And to auto generate the value, I need the generated value annotation. Now, same thing goes for the module class which extends project. Let us put this as entity. Since module doesn't have any kind of ID or primary key, I'm going to leave it as it is. Let's go to the task and annotate task with entity. So now I have three classes with the annotations, with the basic annotations like entity, ID and generated value. Same thing with entity here and in task also we have entity annotation. For inheritance mapping, there are basically three types of inheritance or strategies. What are the three strategies? The first by default is called single table. The second is joint and then there is another strategy called table per class. Now let us see all these three strategies. If you notice the single table is by default. Now let us go create a test inheritance class with the public static void main method and let us create objects of these three classes project module and task and let us put some data in it. So here if you notice I have created the annotation configuration object and then I have the three classes added to the config.add annotated class. These are my entity classes, project, module, and task. And I'm reading from the Hibernate configuration file. I'm also creating the session factory and session, and I'm going to begin the transaction. So now let us create the objects of project, module, and task. So here I have a project object called P, and I've set the project name as Hibernate Lessons. And then I've created a module object called Spring Lessons, and I've set a module name. Since module inherits from project, it will also have access to the project name. And the same thing goes with task. Since task inherits from module, which in turn inherits from project, task will have access to all the three setter methods, that is Java Lessons, Collections, and array list. And here I am saving all the three objects and here I am committing the transaction. Make sure your database is up and running. That is, go to the bin directory of db derby and start, start network server bat. So my database is up and running. And also make sure that your database connection is working. So here I'll come and right click and click on connect. So I also have my Eclipse connected to the database. Now to run this, for the basic default strategy, that is combining all these class files into one table, that is project, module, and task into one table, that is single table inheritance, the first strategy, I really don't need any kind of annotation. I can simply run it. By default, it will do a single table strategy. Let us go run this test inheritance. 
Now if you go and check the tables, here you will see a table called project and then in the table called project, in the table called project, you will notice that it has all the columns that is like of project and module and task. So it combined all the three cl classes into one single table. So this is the single table inheritance or the default strategy. Suppose you want to explicitly specify the default strategy also. It is not always a good practice to just leave it for default. It's a good practice to specify even if it is a default strategy. You can go on top of this project class and then over here you can annotate it with inheritance and within parenthesis you can say strategy equal to inheritance type dot now if you notice the three strategies of inheritance mapping is given here single table which is a default joint and table per class now let us put single table itself and then test it out we won't see any changes because this is the default strategy refresh the schema and then check the tables and project data sample contents you'll notice that it hasn't changed because single table is the default strategy. Now let me go change the inheritance type to like say joint and now let us go and test this particular data. Right click run as Java application. It's going to drop all the tables and recreate it. Now if you go refresh the schema you can notice that it has created the table called project and then it has created a table called module and then it has created a table called task. Now let us go and investigate each and every table. So here you notice the project has project ID and project name. The module has the project name and then you can notice here that it also has this project ID column. So that way a relationship is established with that particular primary key, the project ID primary key. So here if you notice the task also has a task name and project ID. Now this project ID is the primary key of the project table. So we learned what is this joint inheritance. Now let us go look at another type of strategy. Table per class. Now let us test out the table per class. While dropping the tables you may have some errors because of the relationship between these tables. So I would always recommend that you either go manually drop those tables or you can try running the application again and it may work. So in this case if you notice like it is running perfectly fine. So here you can go and refresh the schema again. Now you can notice that you still have those three tables but the way the data has been stored is different. So in this case I have the project ID and project name but in the module table if you notice that I have the project ID, project name and the module name and in the task table you will notice that I have the project ID, project name, module name and task name. So you can choose while doing your project whichever strategy that you like. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to each and every strategy. The advantage of single table is you'll have all your data in one table but then the problem is like you know if you have too many um, columns in a particular class you're going to have a large table. The best strategy that I like is the joint strategy because it does not repeat the data. In table per class you notice that you notice that the project name gets repeated across various tables or the module name. So data is being repeated again and again in table per class. So joint is the best but then I will leave it up to you. So this ends our inheritance mapping chapter.